We're going to start with phonotactics, which is the allowable clusters of sounds that we can produce in a specific language, then move into phonemes and allophones, which are really the differences between how we perceive sounds and how we actually produce them, depending on certain environments, move into phonological processes to give names to these different changes and alterations that we make, and then end with phonological features and rules, which is probably one of the most difficult parts of phonology. However, if you practice a lot with the sounds, it becomes a lot easier. So as you brush up on those phonetics and produce those sounds, pay attention to what your airflow is doing, what your voicing is doing, and all that kind of stuff. And phonological features becomes a lot more intuitive. So. Phonotactics is the acceptable sequences of sound in a language, and this is part of your competence. So this is part of what you know as a speaker of a language. So as an English speaker, you can take a look at these two words, tweebs and clerk, and determine whether or not these words could be acceptable English words or not. So tweebs is probably not a word that is used in English, but it's totally fine to say tweebs. We know that we can do tw at the beginning of a syllable. We can put an e as a vowel sound and then end in a bzz sound. But in the case of clerk, this is a little bit harder for English speakers to pronounce, and that's because we can't typically do tl at the beginning of a syllable, uh, but everything else is okay. So we can do the e and we can do the irk sound at the end, but the tl is a little weird. So we'd say, no, this is not a permissible English word. It violates our phonotactics. So here are some examples of some syllable or word onsets in English. We call these onsets if they occur at the beginning of a word or syllable. That's what onset means. So we can see that we have some gaps in some places. So for instance, we can do pl and pr, but we can't do pw. Now, some kids, when they first learn English, might say things like pwe instead of play, um, but adults don't ever use the pw in words to start them in English, as far as I'm aware. Now, in the t cases, we can do tr and tw, as in tree and twin, but we can't do that tl cluster at the beginning. Now, we can separate them into separate syllables. For instance, if we do the word bootleg, then we can do a t and an l side by side, but we can't start a syllable with TL. So we can't just have a word that's like tleg. We can say it if we pronounce it well enough, but we know it's not an English word. Now in the case of k, whether it's kl, kr, or kw, we can do them all. Club, crab, quick, all of these are acceptable. Now the general rule is that if you can do a two consonant cluster back to back, then you can typically add an S in front of it. And this is true except for one case. So we can do pl and pr, so we can do spl and spr, like as in split and sprite. We can't do pw, so it makes no sense that we could do spl. Like if we can't do the simpler version, then we can't do the more complicated version. It's the same with spl. We can't do tl, so we can't do sl. In fact, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, tr is fine, so str is fine. And what we don't find in English is any st sounds. So like stwing, <laughs> we don't say things like that. Maybe kids do, but adults don't. So although we have the twa, we don't have st. And with our k's, we have kl, kr, and qu. So we have skl, skr, and squ as well as in sclera, scream, and squeal. Some of these might be a little bit more rare than others, but these are all permissible sounds in English. Now let's contrast this with Spanish. So Spanish doesn't have the R that we have, so we've removed that. But if you take a look at this phonotactics chart, we see plaza, puente, tuerto, clava, cuadro. So we can do five out of the six. But what we can never do in Spanish is we can never add an S to the beginning of the cluster. So Spanish does not allow what we call SCC clusters with an S sound and then two consonants. We can do some CC clusters, but we can't do SCC. So when you think about phonotactics, you have to remember that these are language specific. And that is why learning another language can be so difficult because when you want to learn a language like Spanish, uh, let's say you have the word um, especial, what a typical English speaker would do when first learning Spanish is they would go e spe si al. But Spanish can't do it. Spanish can't do sp. So what actually happens in Spanish is when they pronounce it, they go es, pe, si, al. 
a spacey out. So they don't put the sp together. They separate it into different syllables because that's what their phonotactics allows them to do. So this is a case of language interference when English speakers learn Spanish because they aren't adhering to Spanish phonotactics. They have to learn Spanish phonotactics. So here's some examples of sounds that other languages have that English does not. In Bantu, they can start syllables with NT, so they can say something like NTO, NTO, I can't really say it. Uh, Bulgarian does VNUK, VNUK, VN at the beginning. Tibetan allows our ing sound, our ng sound, our velar nasal, at the beginning of a syllable, as in ngabju. Uh, we do not have any words in English that start with ng. And in Russian, it allows an fp at the beginning that is also palatalized. So uh, if you say a word like peak in English, although we would transcribe it as pik for peak, uh, you might notice that your tongue is a little bit more towards the palate when you pronounce that first p, peak. And that is what's happening with f and p. So they'd say it's like pirot. I can't really pronounce it, but that would be bird. So if you're learning one of these languages, you have to get comfortable with pronouncing new syllable onsets that you might not have in English or your native language. Now, some of these differences that we see, like why don't we have words uh, like flemt or crucial? Well, you might also ask, why don't we have question, uh, words like tlerbal or schult? And these are all gaps. So when we miss a word in a language, we call it a gap. In other words, there's like a gap in our dictionary or our vocabulary or our lexicon. And there are accidental gaps and systematic gaps. So if it's accidental, what that means is that the word could exist according to the phonotactics, but it doesn't. So flemt, crucial, and wardingalini are all sounds that we are all words that we could have in English, but we just don't have them because no one has invented them yet. Systematic gaps are words that don't exist because the phonotactic says that they can't exist. So, tlerbal. We can't do that TL, so we're not going to have that word in English. Um, mlak. Ml. We don't have words that start with ml in English, and we also don't have words that end in LRB. So, mlak, thaporb. It's really difficult to say. And same with schult. We cannot start a syllable or a word in English with F and sh. So, therefore, this is a systematic gap. The language cannot account for them because the phonotactics does not allow it. So, with these fake words, let's see if these fake words are gaps that are accidental or systematic, according to English phonotactics. So, usually the best thing to do is to try to pronounce it, and if it's easy to pronounce, then it's an accidental gap. If it's very difficult to pronounce, then it's usually systematic. So, uh, Sally da Bida, Sally da Bida. This is an accidental gap. We could have this as an English word because it doesn't violate any phonotactics. Consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. That's fine. What about the second one? Ruflican, ruflican. Well, it's not too bad at the beginning because we can do rough and leak, but we can't do this KN cluster at the end because the phonotactics does not allow us to end words in KN. We can end in NK, but we can't end in KN. So in this case, it is systematic. Now, what about the last one? Majikayo. Majikayo. Well, this might sound Japanese to you, but it could be an English word. Uh, majikayo, uh, majikayo, you know, however you want to pronounce it. The English phonotactics allows it. It's just that we don't have it. So this is accidental. So if we take a look at these three words, we could have two of these as English words, but the second one would not be accepted by English speakers as an English sounding word. 